In case you missed yesterday's video, I went over how I went from 280 pounds to where I am now, being on the covers of fitness magazines, but also being one of the world's most published fitness models. Now, as you well know, I am not your typical fitness model. I'm someone that's predicating my entire life on science, and I did back then as well. And quite honestly, that's how I was able to make such a big transformation. But I want to share with you some of the big myths that came along with intermittent fasting. You see, when I went through my transformation, fasting was a huge, huge part of it. Like, I would go so far as saying it was pivotal, and that's exactly why I want to share my secrets with you so that you can get the most out of everything that you're doing in life. But I want to outline everything surrounding intermittent fasting with what you're probably going to hear most, and that is all the misconceptions, all the myths, and all the negative Nancy comments that you're going to hear. So I'm going to outline them right here so that you have the science to back it up. Everything I've drawn here is a very simplified version of some very complex science that happens in your body when you're intermittent fasting. So you need to know this in order to rebel and combat those negative comments that you're going to hear inevitably. The first one is you're going to be starving when you're fasting. Well, let me explain something to you. When you are fasting, sure, you might get a little hungry for the first couple of hours, but believe it or not, your body creates a lot of different hormones that are very, very satiating, and it creates one particular fuel source known as beta-hydroxybutyrate, also known as a ketone body, that really, really makes you feel good. And it's been shown in multiple studies to actually curb your appetite. You see, it decreases something known as CKK, cholecystokinin, which is a hormone that tells your brain that you're satiated. It's basically released whenever you're done eating so that your body knows to stop triggering a hunger response. Well, when you're fasting and you have those levels of beta-hydroxybutyrate that are elevated, it really ramps up your levels of CKK. So when your CKK is up, your hunger is down. So you're not gonna be starving. And no, your body's not going to start wasting a bunch of muscle tissue. It's flat out going to burn the tissue it doesn't need. It's going to burn fat. It's pretty darn amazing. In fact, there's even another thing that happens in your body where even your cells trim the excess material that they don't need. It's actually called autophagy. And basically, what it is, is where your cells start to eat wasteful parts of your cells that they don't need. So here's a healthy cell. Here's an unhealthy cell. You see how the healthy cell is fully complete, nice and spherical. This one is deformed and it has an incomplete membrane, it has an incomplete shell. Basically, that's an unhealthy cell, very simplified version of it. So when you're fasting, your healthy cell essentially turns into a big Pac-Man that runs around and eats the unhealthy cells. So it's eating all the wasteful material and it can even eat components of itself that allow it to become more efficient. So that's autophagy at its very finest. Now, another thing that it does is it signals what's known as apoptosis, which is a promoted cell death, which is exactly why I drew the little tombstone there to indicate that the unhealthy cells essentially commit suicide. They just go away and die. Now, I'm not saying that's gonna happen to you, but I'm saying it's happening to your cells that aren't needed. So when people say that you're gonna be starving, no, your body just becomes much more efficient and learns to eat things that it needs to eat to survive. It's not going to start eating your insides, it's not going to start eating your organs or eating your muscle tissue. Which leads me in to the next thing that you're going to hear all the time, which is that you're going to be hungry all the time. Not the case. Let me put it down like this. When your body is in a fasted state, it's utilizing stored body fat as a source of fuel, mobilizing free fatty acids, converting them into ketone bodies like acetoacetate, acetone, and beta-hydroxybutyrate. Well, get this. When you're eating a normal diet, you have carbs that have 4 calories per gram. Then you have protein that has four calories per gram. Then you have fat that has nine calories per gram. Well, think about it like this. If this is an energy source and this is an energy source, which one's gonna give you more energy? Well, fat, because it has more than double the actual energy. Calories are energy. But when you're fasting, your body is utilizing fats. So even though it's pulling fat from your body tissue, it's still fat and it still has nine calories per gram, which means it's like jet fuel compared to this stuff. So no, you're not gonna be hungry. Your body's gonna be satiated. It has plenty to feed off of. And if you're super, super ripped and have the six pack abs that you already want, then you're probably not looking at this program the same way that other people are. This program will still work for you, but it works as a maintenance mode if that's the case. Then we hear this one. You're gonna be tired all the time. 
And I'm going to couple it with this one right here, too, which is the fact that your mind isn't going to work well, because they kind of go hand in hand. Look at this. Here we have the liver. When the liver doesn't have glucose, which is regular carbohydrates and regular sugar, it produces those ketone bodies I talked about, known as beta-hydroxybutyrate, or BHB. Okay, now you have your brain. Your brain has this thing called the blood-brain barrier. This is the blood-brain barrier right here. It acts as a force field that only allows very specific things to get in there for energy. The brain only likes to run on very specific things. Now, this glucose can normally go into the brain and give us energy. But when we're fasting, we don't have glucose. So what happens? Well, beta-hydroxybutyrate is a ketone and has the key to get into the brain to provide us with energy. And believe it or not, the brain runs better on ketones than it does on regular carbohydrates. So those that tell you that you're not going to have the mental function or you're not going to be able to have the energy that you normally have are totally misled. And they've probably never tried fasting before because the science shows you're going to have more energy and more mental horsepower. Lastly, people think you're going to lose muscle. Not the case. I don't even need a diagram to show you that. Flat out, growth hormone levels increase by over 2,000% with a period of fasting. Plain and simple. And growth hormone is a master hormone that is secreted by the pituitary gland that regulates how much muscle you build and how much fat you burn. Plain and simple. End of story. So I hope this clears up the big myths around fasting. And if you hadn't heard these myths before, when you embark on the science-based six-pack program, you're going to hear them. And that's exactly why you have this video to show all those naysayers that are standing in the way of you getting the ripped six-pack abs that you imperatively need. I will see you in the next video. And in the next video, you're going to really like what I talk about because I'm going to break down time under tension. I'm going to break down the science of the workouts and why the specific body weight workouts that we're using in the science-based six-pack program are second to none when it comes down to being coupled with a fasting program. So stay close by for tomorrow so that you can make sure you see that video as well. I'll see you soon.